here's a hack which I am rather happy with. So this uh, is a BenQ XL 2411Z gaming monitor, one of these uh, 120 hertz jobbies, which is being powered from the power supply and logic board out of an ASUS MX279 monitor, which is an entirely unrelated a different monitor. And uh, the reason I was happy with this is not only is this working perfectly, but every single feature of the BenQ gaming monitor is working, and we've even improved upon uh, the feature set you get with it. So let's uh, have a look at how this actually works. Now for starters you might wonder why one would do this at all, and the reason is rather simple. I got my hands on this monitor for free, except it had no power supply. I just got the panel, the logic board, the case and the buttons. So I had to figure something out in order to get it to actually run. And uh, it proved that uh, someone had done a bit of reverse engineering on this thing on the internet pr prior to me. Uh, and uh, to power this logic board up is a rather simple deal. It only runs on a single 5 volt supply and ground and that's it. Uh, you don't need anything else from the power supply in order to run it. And as happens to be the case, the logic board out of the ASUS monitor uh, has a 19 volt input and a 5 volt uh, switch mode regulator on it which seems to be able to handle it. On top of that it has an LED driver which is compatible with the panel for the BenQ and you could even get a datasheet for it on the net. Which made modifying the ASUS circuit to take some input from the BenQ motherboard a very pleasant task indeed. So when it comes to making something like this work, there are a couple of things you want to uh, consider. Uh, the page board has to be able to turn on and off uh, when the monitor logic board requests that, and it has to be able to turn back on uh, after being turned off. And uh, that feature, feature works rather well, because we can turn that right off and turn it right back on again. We do get a bit of distortion since the BenQ motherboard doesn't power cycle the backlight quite it's supposed to. But, uh, as you can see, it's working just fine. And for some reason my computer just blue screened. Okay. Another thing you need the power supply to be able to do is control the brightness of the monitor. And uh, that was a bit of a bother to get working since the BenQ uses a very fast 18 kilohertz PWM output in order to achieve this with the original power supply. Uh, but I got it working through some analog magic. And uh, that is what we see when the gained feature. Uh, because not only can I dim the backlight down extremely low, but I can actually dim it down until it disables completely. And that is not a feature you get on the original monitor for obvious reasons. It's very risky if you turn it down too far and uh, you're not going to have an easy time turning it back on since you'd have to never give a menu of a backlight. And the final thing you need the paint supply to do, which is specific to this monitor, is that you want it to be able to flick of a backlight very quickly because this monitor supports uh, what's labeled as blur reduction in the menu and what that does is it flickers the backlight at 120 hertz uh, synchronized with the frame time so that you essentially get a CRT like refresh based display uh, look uh, which you indeed get. You can see it flickering away there uh, rather well. Now this of course comes at the expense of uh, some monitor brightness since you're only running the backlight at a 20% a duty cycle. Uh, but it is working very well indeed. I think that uh, I am the, it's supposed to go somewhat brighter uh, than the maximum value I get uh, with this feature enabled. But uh, it certainly is not uh, unusably dark. You could play a game on this. The original power supply has a more refined way of compensating for this by literally increasing the LED current. Uh, however, that's not uh, feasibly easy to do with this power supply, so I'm not going to put any extra time into it. I I'm just very happy to see the feature actually working. So with all that covered, let's uh, have a look at how I actually did it. So the first thing I did was uh, figure out the pinout of the BenQ board. The pinout is also, also available on a resource on the net which I'll try to link down below. Uh, but the pins which we really care about are the, of course, the plus 5 volts input which is powering everything, the PWM output which controls monitor brightness and the backlight enable pin which controls when to turn the backlight on and off as well as to flicker the backlight in the blur reduction mode. 
So when I got that figured out, I powered the board up with the lab power supply and uh, did some messing around with the controls to figure out what the kind of ranges for the controls are. Uh, so the PWM, of course, controls for brightness and it's uh, modulated at 18 kilohertz, which is a very high frequency for this kind of thing. They're usually in the couple kilohertz range. Uh, and a 0% brightness uh, coincides with a 7.5% uh, uh, duty cycle. 50% is 30% and 100% is 53.7%. Uh, these values are much higher when the uh, flicker reduction is enabled. Uh, I think they go from about 50% to 100% uh, when that is the case. Uh, that's how the original power supply compensates for the lower duty cycle by simply uh, running a higher current through the LEDs. The backlight enable pin is a very simple logic output. It is uh, uh, zero volts uh, when the monitor is off and it is 3.3 volts when the monitor is on. Uh, however, this is modulated at uh, 120 hertz at a 20% duty cycle when the monitor is in flicker reduction mode. And that is how the monitor does the uh, refresh uh, imitation backlight flickering. It just turns the backlight on and off at a medium high frequency. And with these two controls combined, you can control the brightness and the uh, flicker of the monitor. Uh, something to note about the BLE backlight enable pin is that uh, when the monitor is off, it's actually in a high impedance state. It doesn't pull hard down. So if you want to turn it off properly, you need to have some kind of pull down, else it will just stay floating and uh, you'll have a backlight which is kind of sporadically turning on depending on the weather. So once I had all that figured out, I had a look at the uh, ASUS power supply board to see if uh, it would at all be possible to uh, connect these boards together. I already knew how to turn the ASUS board on since I had used it for a previous project, so I knew that it would be possible to enable and disable the backlight circuit. Uh, the chip on the ASUS board uh, for driving the back LED backlight is an MP3389, which is a very standard uh, chip, which uh, has 12 LED output channels, which are uh, run uh, free in parallel for a total of four output channels, which is extremely common for pretty much all 20-something inch uh, edge-lit LCD monitors. So I knew right from the get-go that this chip was going to pay over backlight just fine on a physical basis. It had the right regulation loop to do so. What was a bit of a challenge was getting the BenQ monitor to talk to this chip. Because the MP3389 only supports a 2 kHz PWM brightness control. And just running the PWM signal into it from the BenQ motherboard would result in nothing it wouldn't turn on. Uh, however, it also supports a DC brightness control if you connect a capacitor to the uh, BOSC pin. So uh, that's combined with this very simple RC DAC circuit, which just takes the PWM, limits the current through the resistor, stores, that, stores the resulting voltage in a capacitor, and has a little bleeder resistor there to make a brightness adjustment possible. Uh, having that just feed into the analog brightness control input works a charm. It's a bit uh, finicky when it comes to the ground between the two boards. If you have a bad ground, you'll have a bit of uh, backlight flicker since uh, this is uh, rather s this is an analog voltage between about 200 millivolts and 1.2 volts. But uh, in the end, it works just fine. The component values is a 1 1K3 resistor and a 10 microfarad capacitor and a 3K6 uh, uh, divide resistor. Uh, the point of this resistor is uh, uh, to lower the voltage slightly uh, because if you just have a 1k3 resistor and the 10 microfarad capacitor you will have a voltage which is uh, about uh, 1.8 to 0 0.5 volts and that wouldn't give you the right range of control uh, the chip adjusts for brightness between 0.2 and 1.2 volts so you just need to stay in that range in order for that to work but uh, once i figure that out it worked just fine and uh, here's just a couple of uh, reverse engineering notes I made about the ASUS monitor. Uh, the uh, original backlight output uh, is from uh, a 10 pin connector which just goes straight to the LEDs on the panel, no, nothing to think about. Uh, soldered wire straight onto that, you'll see that in a moment. And the original brightness control had a transistor going to the internal processor and a bunch of filtering stuff. I just removed all of this stuff and connected it straight to the, the BenQ motherboard through my DAC circuit 
and vatabate it. And here's the modified Asus monitor power supply slash mainboard thing. So it obviously has a, a graphics processor already in place that is simply not being used, it's not being powered at all. And this board runs with a DC 19 volt input. This here is a switching 5 volt regulator, which I haven't been able to find a data sheet for, but I've tested it at about 1.2 amps and the BenQ motherboard draws about 1.2 amps and it seems to be running just fine. Even after being powered for quite a while, nothing's running warm. So I can imagine this being a roughly 2, 2.5 amp regulator made to power everything in the monitor, basically. After that regulator, we have a giant linear 3.3 volt step down as well as a 1.2 volt step down to power the logic stuff. So this, I'm rather confident in this 5 volt regulator powering the BenQ motherboard. You know, I've just tapped the output from there as well as a ground over there. And that's just running straight to the 5 volt input of the BenQ monitor. Uh, however, the most interesting stuff is of course going on around the uh, backlight driver circuit and that is the MP3389 right there. Uh, the backlight output connectors originally here, one of these little tiny flat flex connectors. The BenQ LCD doesn't have one of those so I've just soldered uh, the wire connecting to the LCD onto that and it's just hard soldered in. I'm going to have to perhaps extend the cables when I'm made in the case but that's no big deal. Uh, real interesting stuff, of course, is uh, the uh, interface circuit here, uh, where you can see the uh, white wire is the signal ground, which is going to ground rather close to the chip. The yellow wire is the backlight enable pin, which is uh, doing the backlight on off as well as flicker. And uh, I haven't sold a wire yet, but uh, this uh, resistor leg here is the uh, PWM input, which is going through this 1K3 resistor, a 3K6 resistor underneath, and there's a big uh, 10 microfarad ceramic cap tucked underneath them as well. And uh, I have put uh, this 2.2 nanofarad uh, ceramic cap in there in order to switch modes on the chip. It was originally set up to run in PWM brightness mode, uh, but uh, by replacing a resistor here with this capacitor, I've switched modes on this chip to analog brightness control. So let's uh, have a bit of a closer look at this under the microscope. Alright, so this is the MP3389 here, and we've got a relevant pin so mostly along this edge. So we've got pin number 5 here is the backlight enable, uh, which is snaking its way across over there, where I've just tacked on my wire. I've removed all the interface stuff to, to the original processor on the board. And uh, pin 6 here is the uh, brightness control pin, uh, which is going straight over here. And it's pretty much all obscured, but uh, there is a, a 1206 size, a 10 microfarad ceramic cap underneath these resistors, which is soldered one end to ground and the other end to the pin. And the resistors are coming in uh, to the end of the cap, just to forming a very basic uh, DAC circuit. Uh, I tried using a 1 microfarad capacitor to begin with, but uh, that proved to be a bit flickery and horrible. You really need the 10 microfarads in order to smooth it out properly. And way down over here, uh, we've got my 2.2 uh, nano timing cap. So this cap is used to set the backlight uh, PWM switching frequency. And the data sheet uh, just used a 2.2 nano cap as an example. So that's what I use, and it seems to be working just fine. And if we look on the other side of a chip, uh, you can see that we've got uh, a bunch of pins, these three, as well as these three, and these final two at the edge here, as well as that one, uh, are connected in parallel three and three. And these are the current sinks for the LEDs. So each of those four channels is going through one of those serial ohm resistors and uh, is jumped to one of the uh, four LED strings in the backlight circuit of the uh, BenQ panel. Originally, they of course went to this connector here. The MP3389 also incorporates a boost converter for raising the voltage uh, for the LEDs up. Uh, they, these strings run at about 40 volts each. And uh, that's going to the two center pins of a connector here and go to the red wires, which are just going to the anodes of the LEDs. I haven't touched the uh, voltage regulation or current regulation loop at all. So probably the BenQ is running at a slightly higher 
LED current than it's supposed to, which does result in the, the fact that you can set the brightness ridiculously high and probably burn your, your backlight LEDs out rather quickly. Uh, but uh, I've chosen not to change that since the uh, backlight flicker mode does give you such a big uh, brightness limit due to the fact that we can't really compensate for the low duty cycle by doing anything other than setting the brightness and the brightness is set at max as is. Uh, so the boost converter is made up of, I think, uh, this transistor here and uh, probably this choke. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, it works and that's about it. Uh, if we move uh, a bit further down the board, you can see the 5 volt output for the BenQ mo motherboard being tapped off right there and the ground is being tapped off way over here where there's supposed to be a cap. And uh, that's about it. It took about a day to figure this out. And uh, all the stuff to do now is solder a proper lead for the uh, brightness control and mate everything in this case. And this thing should be ready to go. And as a quick side note, if we have a look at the back of the BenQ's panel, we can see some traces of the original power supply. H. That thinks no more for this world. Shame I didn't get my hands on it though. Alright, I've never made it everything in the case. I've just cut the wires to length, hot glued them in place to make sure that all the solder joints to the little surface made components don't come off. And we should pretty much be ready to give this a test. So here's to hoping. Alright, here it goes. And we have a blink. And saying thank you, but we've got no backlight. All right, the issue was uh, easy enough to spot under the microscope and with a multimeter. Uh, uh, it seemed that uh, when I was extending the uh, backlight uh, wires, uh, one of the serial own jumper links had actually gone open. So rather than fixing that, I just soldered the corresponding LED wire straight onto the chip. And now, now it's working just fine. So let's give it another go. That's looking mighty well better. And I'd call that a working monitor with just a DVI and a power connector going to it. So now all I've got to do is dip this thing back in the case and it's going to be good to go. And there we go. Case back on. I made sure it worked and it worked. Uh, so here you can see my uh, DC jack. I just uh, drilled a hole in the uh, case and just snapped some plastic out of there and we've got a perfect little slot to shove our 19 volt AC adapter into. A big jolly hole there where you can touch the logic board but I don't quite care, nothing dangerous in there as long as you don't fiddle with the <laughs> LED backlight cable which is running right there I see. So now I'm just going to shove a foot on this thing and we'll have a look at how it actually looks in use. So there you have it. I'd say that's one rather working BenQ XL2411Z. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back in the game. I didn't quite think this through.